Now, uh, if you hear me stumble over a word in this intro or perhaps flip a number around, I've got something of an excuse for it. And that's because I'm dyslexic. It is a learning disorder that affects between 8 and 10% of people all around the world. And while it is most challenging for children, it can still affect adults like me uh, throughout much of their lives. So to talk about dyslexia and some new possible treatments, our health editor, Julia Seeger, is with me. Julia, hello to you. Hello, so Nadia. First of all, just tell us what dyslexia is, because it's part of a wider family of learning conditions, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And first, I, I have a confession to make. I'm actually dyslexic, too. So I've actually learned a lot through uh, reading about dyslexia, about how we actually function. But the disorder is indeed part of a larger family of uh, what we call learning disorders that are dys. Uh, D-Y-S, so you have dysphagia, dyslexia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, dysgraphia. We're not going to go into the details of it, but they all have this common point that they modify the ability not only to retain, but also to understand, recover, and communicate information. Now, it's it makes it harder, of course, for children and adults to read, but also to spell and plan effectively. And as of today, scientists actually don't quite agree on the causes. We know that there is a genetic factor indeed. There's a 50% higher chance for children to be dyslexic if one uh, of, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the parents is already suffering from the disorder. Now, the causes indeed are still unknown, but scientists do agree on the fact that it is not linked to a lack of intelligence or a lack of intellectual stimulation. Uh, it is linked to a cognitive, a different type of brain that functions differently. So it is not linked to uh, um, Intelligence, indeed, some of the most intelligent people that walked this earth were actually dyslexic. I'm thinking about uh, Leonardo da Vinci and Einstein, for instance. So, how does it actually manifest itself? Well, kids uh, who ha who are dyslexic, you'll uh, notice that they have this difficulty decoding single words, so words that are in isolation, for instance. Uh, they can also confuse very small words like at and to, said and and, goes and does, uh, and they can also make consistent reading and spe spelling errors. So, for for instance, they can uh, letter do letter reversals with the B and the D. As I, I see that you're smiling. I think we all uh, recognize it's ourselves here. quite familiar, here. Julia, yeah. Indeed, they can reverse, um, you know, uh, words all together. So, for instance, tip and pit. Uh, they can do letter inversions with M and W, but also with U and N. Or word substitutions all together with house, for instance, or home. Yeah, I remember as a kid, I always confused from and form. I don't know why two letters in the middle was always a struggle for me. I was diagnosed when I was about five, quite young. Tell us, how can a parent get their child diagnosed? Well, first of all, it's important to say that there is indeed no cure. You said yeah. it earlier, and early assessment is definitely, uh, the, of course, uh, it's going to lead to the best outcome. But there's actually a, a lot of kids who aren't diagnosed at all. It can even go undiagnosed for years until adulthood. But it's very important to say that it's never too late to actually seek help. Now, most children with dys dyslexia will actually succeed in school and do quite well. But they need, definitely need tutoring and speech therapists. And it's also often stressed, and this is very important, that they need the emotional support of their family in the process. Now, you found some research from two French scientists. They've made a rather interesting discovery that points to the fact that dyslexia could actually be linked to a problem in your eye. That's right. So not everyone agrees on this, but it's going to explain why sometimes, Nada, you've been confusing uh, different letters. But two French scientists by the name of Albert Lefloche and Guy uh, Ropard found differences in a part of the eye that's called the fovea. Now, uh, what they looked at is the Maxwell centroid. So what is it? Well, it's a part in your eye where you have the blue light receptors. And they found that those Maxwell centers uh, are actually asymmetrical. So if we're going to take a look at what happens happens for people uh, who aren't dyslexic. When you look at their Maxwell centroid, which is uh, a small um, a small circle, you're going to see it here, they're actually asymmetrical uh, for people who are not dyslexic, meaning that they tend to have a dominant eye, just like people tend to have a dominant hand. So they can be a right-eyed observer or a left-eyed observer. And that leads to the fact that it enables their brain to cancel out altogether the mirror image. So if they're right-eyed uh, observer, they're going to cancel the left eye. So they get to see that letter very clearly. What happens for people who are dyslexic is that their Maxwell centroid is actually the same exact shape. So what happens is that in the end, you can't cancel out that mirror image. So what happens is that you get to have a superimposed vision 
and hence it gets all blurred and you, you, all the letters kind of get confused. That's fascinating. It's not something I've ever heard before, Julia. And you've got with you there a little prop on the set. This is a lamp that might be able to help people like you and me. Absolutely, and many other kids uh, out there because it's uh, practical, portable. You can take it to school also. Uh, so what it does is that there's these almost imperceptible flashes of light so that when you put it underneath, uh, when you put it underneath your, your paper, for instance, well, it's going to actually cancel out that super imposition. So it's actually quite mind boggling because when you get to look at your paper, you realize how much chaos you actually were witnessing on your page. And that all kind of goes away. And this is very important. It doesn't heal uh, dyslexia, but it helps because many people have to compensate. And so that gets actually very tired. And according to their research, well, it's actually effective for 80% of people with dyslexia. As soon as we get off air, Julia, You're gonna I'm, try it out. <laughs> I'm trying the light. Thanks very much indeed. Julia Seeger for us You're today welcome, Nadia. on Dyslexia.